Hi, and welcome back to AEC Reacts, where we react to subjects related to the architecture, engineering, and construction industry. My name is Alicia Washington. I'm the Director of Marketing and Jedi at HRP Associates. And joining me today is Christina Arbor. And here with me today is Chris Abel, is a Luke Glendening Marketing Manager at Turner Construction. Thanks for joining us, Luke. Thanks for having me. Great. So we're going to talk about something near and dear to our hearts. Um, marketing and business development. So it has evolved, that this is what they say, it has evolved over the last 20 years. How do you react to that? I definitely agree with that. Um, when I started, uh, marketing was just coming out of the admin era where it was solely just an afterthought where we need somebody to help pull together all the stuff that all the other uh, construction professionals do. Um, through the last 10, 15 years, it has really accelerated. Uh, the expectations have grown with uh, um, really delivering high-end quality marketing materials. Yep. And as the software and uh, like increases and people's um, skills develop, the bar has been raised to really keep up. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree with that. And you know aside from the proposals which don't go away like those will continue to stay even you know as long as things are getting funding we're always going to have to respond to rfps right. that have received that federal funding even um it's you know the push for social media digital media content creation Videos. that's like the biggest thing right now right um and it's going to continue to be that way as like professional service firms there's no other way to market our services other than, you know, business development, you know, networking, you know, nurturing those relationships, establishing those relationships, but also creating that content. And it's one of the challenges that we continue to face, yep. right? Um, but also getting our like, owners to see the value in that content creation and really creating a culture within the company where everyone's involved in you know, helping create the content because it just can't be the marketing department that, you know, creates it. It has to be everyone. It's kind of, it's, it's a team effort. Right. And uh, yeah, we just want to make sure that, you know, when, when we, sometimes we overthink, what do I, how do I make this content great for mm -hmm. putting it on social media? And you'd be surprised when, if you actually do put it out there. Owners are very receptive. Absolutely. Our business development um, staff really rely on the marketers to help facilitate that 100%. process and they could share that on social media as well. So. Yep, that's true. That's true. Well, here with me today is Chris Abel, Membership Director for CTABC. Welcome, Chris. Thank you, Alicia. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming today. Absolutely. So I saw this meme the other day. Okay. Bring back shop class in all public schools. How do you react to that? Okay. Prior to, prior to being with Associated Builders and Contractors, my my previous life, I spent about 10 years in the high schools. Okay, okay. yep. In middle schools, high schools, but mostly high schools recruiting. And I'll speak to a lot of different students. And uh, the th first thing I think about when I, when I see that is a, a specific um, trip that I made to a high school. And I was going into a class that was called Metals One. Mm -hmm. And I was excited because I, the, the place where I was working, I was recruiting. I spent a lot of time recruiting students into you know, skilled labor, you know, skilled trades, I should mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. And when I used to go present to these students, I swear I would go like I was shot out of a cannon. Mm -hmm. Seven o'clock in the morning, I'm ready to go, let's mm -hmm. talk. Mm -hmm. So I walk into this Metals One's, One's class and they're just, there's complete disinterest. I could tell that the teacher is really? pretty down I could tell he was a little like kind of down a little bit. I'm like, this is a little strange. So I go through the first course, or the first class of the day, run through it. It went okay because it was the first class and they were interested in what I had to say to a certain extent, but there was definitely some disinterest. And I'm like, this is a little strange, something weird. So anyway, during one of the breaks, after a couple more classes, I said, what's this all about? Anyway, turns out that the people who were in Metals One were seniors. Mm -hmm. So they were seniors in Metals 1 in the second half of their senior year. Wow. Okay, so that's one. Two, they were kind of the students that, hey, they're not doing much here, they're not doing much there. Let's put them in this class. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't any interest to be mm -hmm. in. He tells me these, these things, basically no one wants to be here. And he says, um, Chris, it's a half year course also. I can't even get through the safety side of things. Wow. And you have to get through the safety side of things. I mean, safety is the priority. Mm -hmm. So that was one. And then he says, uh, Chris, you want, I got to show you something. You think that's crazy. I got to show you something. He brings me next door about two doors down and it is a wood shop. And 
The door's locked, the light's off. I could see the light coming from the window and it is basically just an abandoned wood shop. All the equipment's there, the wood's there, everything's there, no but it's literally it. abandoned. And this was, at the time, this, you know, this was a school that I know for a public school, this was a public school, mm -hmm. they had been one of the top, you know, as far as public schools go, they had the top technical courses. Mm -hmm. And you, there you have a medals one course full of students that are just trying to either get the half credit or just right. get to the end of the year. Right. Or you have, and you have the this wood shop that is literally just completely abandoned. What's the reason why it kind of died out? So he mentioned, um, there's always going to be a financial factor. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you if you if you dig deep enough and start following things, you're going to find out that there's a financial thing here. But I think it was more the interest. Plus, the other thing is this: from my previous life, when you went to schools in the fall, when I showed up at a school to do a visit, mm -hmm. or when I showed up at a school to do a college fair, or when I showed up to do a presentation, the guidance department or career department would give me. They hand you what's called a school profile. Okay. The school profile will have a lot of information, but it will also have information like a pie chart, bar chart as to where the students went. Mm -hmm. For your college, this amount. Two year college, this amount. Military, this amount. The last category most of the time was other. Yeah. It was other. So how thrown off, like who wants to be put in the other bucket mm -hmm. in anything? Mm -hmm. So, and I believe again, there's money tied into that too. How many students go into four years and two years versus blah, 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 blah. Then you have the military side where you have, you know, probably some money attached to that, but there's obviously a lot of honor, but mm -hmm. there's also a lot of honor in regards to being a skilled tradesperson. Right. So I would say over the last uh, six or seven years, even more recently, the last three years, it's starting to shift a little bit. And they're letting these career counselors kind of like, hey, find these students, mm -hmm. get them where they need to be. Mm -hmm. Don't have them be the last on your, you know, your, your, your case load. I, I think they should be in all, mm -hmm. in all schools. I, I completely agree. It, needs to, it yeah. needs to come back. It needs to come back. It does. They should be in it all was, of them. It should, it should. And it was, I know for me, it was my favorite class. All through middle school, we had it. Um, and home ec, too. Yeah. That was yes. another one that was there. And I remember, and, and you're right, it was always the teacher retired and they just never refilled the yeah. position. So let's get that back in the school. Joining me today is Christina Arbor, cost estimator with Turner Construction Company. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. So I saw a statistic. Hispanics are 17% of the workforce, but hold only 8% of STEM jobs. How do you react to that? There's a lot of room for improvement there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember back during Hispanic Heritage Month when we were launching SHEP in mm -hmm. Connecticut, um, I was reading a lot of the demographic data from the Hispanic Star. It, it's all about how people are identifying and reporting. Right. 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 So I know you and I have had conversations with our friends about identifying as people of color versus mm -hmm. white, you know, which boxes we check off. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm not sure if there are people out there who aren't checking the box for Hispanic. Right. Or if they're even like fearful of doing it. Yeah, we've had that conversation quite a bit actually where, yeah. you know, cause you, I know that when I've filled out certain um, applications or forms for things, when I was actually forced to, you know, cause I typically don't pick a race, but when I have to pick a race, I'm always like, well, I don't, I don't know. You know, I'm like Googling, like, I don't know. Well, what does Google say? Like, you know, like, I don't know. So yeah, um, yeah, if people are not identifying as Hispanic, you know, how much more are we actually missing in that data? But yeah, when, when you're looking at the, the population of Hispanics in the ver workforce versus in the STEM fields, mm -hmm. you know, that's that validates, you know, organizations like the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers that right. are so focused on speaking to uh, students at the elementary school level, mm -hmm. you know, high school's prime time when they're trying to figure out what they want to do for their careers. Mm -hmm. And then um, giving them the support and the guidance that they need through college to be successful in these majors. Right. You know, even if they're walking into a room where they don't see someone who looks like them or, or they don't have role models that they re relate to, right? organizations like SHEP help give them that support and those role models and that mentorship. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have SHEP Conference where a lot of companies 
come to to recruit. And then even is that the national conference or is there mm -hmm. regional conferences too? There, there are also regional regional conferences. Um, New York City also has uh, Shep Career Expo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then like I was at UConn Mother Week and I still had my Shep hat on there mm -hmm. while I was talking to the students, like ready to start recruiting them into the company that I work for. Nice. Um, so it's yeah and. Even after you're a professional and you've got that job, Shep is still like a safe place to fall back on. Right. Um, right. So it's always there. It's not. Yeah. It's not like oh, you graduated, you got a job. No, you don't need to. You know, no. Or it's always there to stay. Yeah. And stay to support. It was like Shep was my my first sense of community when I moved to New York City. I didn't know anything about the city. I didn't grow up there. Mm -hmm. um, and then. When I was at work at Turner, I, I was helping recruit Shep alumni straight out of college, and, and we all shared that sense that we wanted something like Shep at work. Yeah. So we started Turner's first Latinx employee resource group. We created that sense of support and community and, and professional development mm -hmm. within the company. So, you know, I'm just, I'm hopeful that to, to see an org like Shep grow and continue to grow and to keep doing what they're doing with supporting youth from a young age through college and even professionals. Well, thank you for that, Christina. Thank you for that reaction. What's your reaction to that? Thank you and we'll see you on the next episode.